Welcome to a review of the Brewster Beacon by Brewolution.com. Now you might remember a few months back we had a look at the uh, the Brewster um, on, in their range and that is uh, one of our YouTube videos that we, we've done. Um, it was fantastic to use that really intuitive piece of equipment and uh, we're really excited to have a go at this latest offering from Brewolution. And certainly there's some key features and upgrades in the Brewster Beacon that set it aside from the Brewster but also from other um, homebrew machines. So key differences are we've got a mounted visible level gauge for easy and accurate reading of the liquid in the kettle as you can see at the side there that's really quite a nice feature you don't have to keep peering in there um, useful during mashing and sparging of course. Uh, we've got a stainless steel filter to cover the entire bottom there uh, hopefully preventing any of the trub getting through into the uh, the pump etc. Uh, the Brewster pumps uh, the water out in three minutes as well, so there's no need to wait for the water to run out by the tap. That's always a problem, scraping the filter on the tap to get that water out into your bucket at the end. The bottom filter claims to reduce sediment by up to 50%. That's certainly a claim that we're going to be testing out. The pump itself sucks directly from the bottom through the bottom filter, ensuring no waste of water. The grain basket can easily be raised in several steps using the removable handle. That's um, a feature that is quite common on most homebrew machines. Um, there's an increased malt capacity uh, with an extended overflow pipe. Um, and uh, essentially they claim it's also easier to clean and maintain. So we're very excited. Um, it, in terms of the packaging, this arrived in perfect condition. That's not always the case with homebrew machines. They often arrive with the dinks here and there inside if they've been damaged in delivery. This was really well packaged. Um, and everything is, is in fantastic condition. So uh, the first step we're going to guide you through um, is getting the water temperature up to uh, mashing temperature and we're going to look at the control panel and see how that works. Now the control panel is a really nice feature of the Brewster Beacon um, and uh, the buttons themselves push with a really sort of a confidence boosting push which is great um, and uh, if we go ahead and fire up the control panel we'll show you um, how this works. Get a nice little tune as you go into your Brewster Beacon. Fantastic. Um, as you can see, um, this is uh, at the moment just recording the ambient water temperature. We've had this heating up for a bit, so hence why it's about 66 degrees. Now, the first thing you'll notice is this records to the tenth of a degree, which is fantastic. Most homebrew machines, uh, I believe, will round to the nearest whole degree. So that's great. You can really get a, a much more precision there with your, uh, your brew and getting your, your temperatures there. So um, there's a couple of different modes you can use. There's manual mode or automatic mode. Um, the auto mode, you can program in um, the machine to automatically go between different temperature profiles. Um, and that's really quite handy if, you know, if you, you're confident what you're doing, you, you just want the brew day to go uh, really quite smoothly. You can program in those steps and fire it off. We're gonna be using the manual mode today um, because we want to um, stop periodically for filming reasons. So uh, straight away, you'll notice that um, we've got the um, flashing power rating here. Uh, that's very easily adjustable here uh, with a simple plus or minus to whatever wattage you need. And we're going to fire it up to the maximum for now to reach our to, to maintain our mashing temperatures. Um, you've also got the uh, temperature that you want um, to target the Brewster Beacon to reach. So at the moment, as you can see, uh, 67 is our mashing temperature there, so that's fine. And of course, you can also set your timer. Um, so we're going to set this um, on for a 90 minutes of, um, of mashing time. So you can go ahead and increase that. And then it's simply a case of pressing the start stop button. And straight away, you can see with the symbol H there, the Brewster Beacon is now heating with that 2,500 watts of power all the way up to uh, 67 in our case. So as you can see, we've already added the uh, malt pipe here, which sits quite nicely in place. Um, there are two graduations of um, feet that are installed around this malt pipe for you to lift up in stages when it comes to sparge. So that's a really nice feature that we've noticed that doesn't always occur on other machines. We've also, of course, added the, the filter at the bottom there that's uh, sitting over the, um, the very bottom to keep the shrub out, hopefully. Um, we've also got a bottom plate um, installed already that's underwater and um, we've got the um, overflow pipe here with the cap on. The reason we put the cap on is we don't want the grains to go through the overflow pipe to the bottom where they could scorch on the element. Um, and there is an option with this um, overflow pipe that we can install if you're doing a smaller batch uh, then you can put the top filter plates um, to sit lower down on that grain bed if you are doing a small batch so that's really quite useful as well. 
Okay, so we are now up to uh, the mashing temperature, so now we're going to show you uh, how to add the grains to the Right, so we're now adding grains, and uh, we want to do this um, really just evenly distributing across uh, the top here. But also, every now and then, periodically, I would stop um, and actually grab yourself your spoon, preferably a big wooden spoon or paddle. Uh, we've only got a plastic one, unfortunately. But you want to give it a little stir every now and then to avoid what's called the dough balls, the dreaded dough balls. Um, that's where the grain can stick and clump together, and that really um, doesn't help with the recirculating of the wort. Um, or the sparge in fact. So um, just give it a little stir every now and then, just make sure there's no dough balls gathering there. Okay, so once your grain is all mixed there, um, you are now ready to add the top um, mesh plate there. So to do that, uh, remove the overflow uh, pipe cap there, preferably a two-handed job there um, if you can. So take that off without dropping it in the grain bed as I've done plenty of times. Um, and then you've got your um, top mesh there with the two little handles on, that's quite nice. Uh, so you can pop that down over the overflow pipe and then that should sit nicely on the grain bed. Just give it a little light push down, nothing major. There we are. And then you can put the overflow, um, the overflow cap itself there, um, screw that onto the top of the overflow pipe. Uh, once that's ready, the next step after that is that you're going to want to um, get your um, let's put it right around. You want to get your um, recirculation arm as well because that's going to be uh, recirculating the wart back over your grain bed. So we'll look at that next. So here's the wart recirculation arm and just look at the, the quality of the engineering on that fantastic bit of kit there. And that's going to go into um, this uh, location here and it's going to be clamped down on either side as well to make it sturdy. Just make sure that the, uh, the ball lock valve there is in the off position. Um, this you're able to regulate the flow of the pump with, so it's, uh, but it's very important you start with that in the off position, okay? So then this uh, recirculation um, slots in like that, and then you push down the two clamps on either side. So when you're ready to fire up the pump, then first of all make sure that the um, ball lock valve is in the on position, and then come around the side here, and you'll notice that there is the pump on switch, so if you hit that, and hopefully you should hear the wonderful sound of wart recirculating over the grain bed. Whilst the wart's recirculating, just keep an eye on the sight glass here. Um, you can see that the level of wart is dropping down there and you don't want it to get too low, otherwise um, of course there won't be any wart for the pump to be extracting and uh, the flow rate will be too high. So if that happens then just adjust the flow rate with the ball lock valve until you get to um, a level that is reasonable um, and keeps that sight glass steady. This is the lid that's provided with the Brewster Beacon. Um, again, really good quality, really sturdy, nice solid handle on top. And you notice it's got the hole there as well. This is for putting the recirculation arm through if you want to, so you can keep the lid on um, at the same time that this is happening. Uh, for filming purposes, we're not going to do that, but you can do, and it'll just help maintain those temperatures um, as you're going through the recirculation stage. So 60 minutes into the mash stage and already you can see just how clear that wart has become. So that's a real testament to the filtering that's going on there through the grain bed. Uh, in the background you might be able to hear the hiss of gas as we are heating up our sparge water uh, due in around about 30 minutes time for the sparge stage. Okay so we're now two minutes away from the end of the mash stage and uh, we're getting ready for the sparge. Uh, to do that we have the handle that's uh, supplied here. Um, that connects onto the two holes inside the, um, the actual uh, grain basket there. And uh, essentially we then lift it up uh, step by step, allowing the water to drain off um, before we add our sparge water at 77 degrees, so like any other sparge really. Um, the key difference is we need to make sure that we remove the um, recirculation arm safely. So to do that, in a moment when the sparge, um, sorry, when the mash is finished, we're going to turn off the pump with the pump switch down the bottom here. And then we're going to turn off the uh, ball lock valve and remove the recirculation arm. It's a little bit difficult to do one-handed, so we'll just do that uh, quickly um, off camera.
Right, so as you can see, we're um, now uh, almost fully sparged here. We're going up to 29 litres in total. And that's the great beauty of having this sight glass. You don't keep having to peer down the side of the uh, malt pipe there to see what level the water's at. So uh, we're going to take away the malt pipe now and uh, then we'll join you for the boil. Right, so we're heading towards uh, our boiling temperature now. We put the lid back on just to uh, bring that temperature up a little bit quicker. Um, so far, so good. The sparge was extremely quick. Uh, there was no stuck sparge there, which was a, a real bonus for us. And, uh, and we've removed that um, uh, We've removed that grain uh, basket now. That is now sitting, draining in a separate container. Um, so yeah, we'll see how quick this gets into boiling. Uh, 2,500 watts. Um, we're at 78.7 at the moment. So uh, we'll rejoin you at the boiling stage where we're going to add our first hopper. So just as we're waiting for the Brewster Beacon to get up to boiling temperature, um, we have also been provided um, with a hop spider strainer here to review as well. So we're going to be adding that into the uh, Brewster Beacon in just a moment. The idea is you put your hops in there and it stops them uh, getting through, circulating through um, and clogging up the rest of the brew when you are uh, putting it into the fermentation bucket. And uh, hopefully that'll help with the clarity in the long run. Just a word of caution though, it is a little sharp on these inside edges. Um, that has not been um, taken out of the, uh, during the machining process. I know we were just rinsing off some of the residual oils and uh, unfortunately we did slice our finger open on this razor sharp inside edge there. So just be careful. Um, other than that though, it seems pretty sturdily built. Okay, so we're at the boiling temperature. We've added our first addition of hops and it's all looking rather nice. There was no boil over as well, which is always a relief. Um, one thing we have noticed is that the, uh, the fine filter that goes along the bottom um, actually lifts slightly during uh, boiling. And this can be quite disconcerting as you get a sudden pocket of, of uh, sort of bubbles released in one go. Um, so it rather bubbles away a bit volcanically in that sense. So um, I'm not sure, maybe some work to be done just to keep that secure at the bottom. Uh, would be a little bit safer there, I think. Uh, but certainly no problems in reaching the boiling temperature. In fact, we've reduced the uh, heating element down to um, 1,800 watts from 2,500. Try and avoid the scorching of the water on the bottom there as well. Okay, so this is going to boil away, hopefully for around about an hour's time, um, and we'll join you at the next hop edition. Okay, so we're around about uh, 20 minutes until the end of boil now. Um, so we're ready to add our second hop addition, which is Simcoe hops. And also there's a clearing agent in there as well. At this stage, we're gonna be um, also sanitizing the chiller by placing it inside the, uh, the boiling water there as well. Okay, so we'll do that um, off camera. So now our wart chiller is in place, sanitizing nicely. You can see we've got the, uh, the hose attachments there. And when it comes to chilling, we're gonna plug that up to our kitchen sink tap. So now we have reached the end of the whole boil. We're now going to start to uh, do the wort chilling. So for that, we're just going to turn on the tap. And you want to get a steady flow, not too fast, not too slow, somewhere in the middle, draining nicely down through the sink. And we're going to join you um, and see how fast it takes to uh, cool this wort down. But already, look, you can see the temperature plummeting down to 89.0 and it's falling nicely. You do get a, a very quick um, initial drop of temperature and then it's you know, a bit slower towards the end there. But uh, we're aiming for about 20 degrees, at which point we can then pitch our yeast into the fermentation bucket. Okay, so we're ready to uh, pour the wort now into the fermentation bucket. We're at a temperature of about 22.3, but it's relatively warm tap water at the moment, so I think we're not going to get much lower anytime soon. So um, what we need to do is remove the uh, wort chiller and the hot bucket, uh, sorry, the hot spider, and uh, then we can actually pump the wort straight into the fermentation bucket using the, the built-in pump there. So just uh, to make it extra um, sterile, if you like, we're sanitizing the um, the actual pumping arm bit as well we used earlier just to make sure that doesn't contaminate our, um, our final product. So um, we're just going to remove those now and rejoin you at the point we're ready to turn on the pump. Okay, so the arm is in position now. Uh, we want to make sure that the uh, ball lock valve is set to the on position. That's the vertical there. And then we can go ahead and hit the pump switch. And there we are, transferring that lovely wart there. Uh, straight into the fermentation buckets and it's at the right temperature for pitching our yeast as well. 
Okay, so that's uh, the whole process of the Brewster Beacon by Brewolution. It's been extremely uh, painless and extremely enjoyable, actually. So um, we've just got the cleanup to go. We'll comment a bit on that. We'll do an overall summary of our findings of using this homebrew machine. So, as you can see, we've pitched our yeast now and we're at the right temperature for that. So now we're just going to run you through some overall findings of using the Brewolution uh, Brewster Beacon. To be honest, overall it's been a really fantastic process. Um, very little hassle, very few problems. Um, you know, I'm going to say a strong 9 out of 10 for using this. And I'm just going to run you down through some of the positives and some of the uh, things to be improved perhaps. So first of all, for us, a big feature was the sight glass tube up the side. Really helpful in determining uh, what level the wort was at at various stages. We like the integrated pump as well, that was a nice feature. Um, again, making it really easy to pump the wort into the fermentation bucket at the end of the process. That was all done really quickly. Generally speaking, filtration is pretty good there as well. Not too much um, sediment left behind or trub there going into the fermentation bucket. Uh, we like the menu. Very intuitive to use there. Um, easy to push buttons, nothing too major there. So that was really good. The idea you can do your automatic steps as well. Whereas that's not unique to this homebrew machine. It certainly is a useful feature. We like the uh, John Guest um, fittings there as well. That's nice to have those included. Makes it much easier for connecting up your wart chiller. And the, uh, the two step on the malt pipe was quite handy as well. Saves your back if you're having to lift up that heavy pipe there. Um, so you can just put it up incrementally, let it drain a bit and pull it up a bit more for the final sparge there. So overall, those are our main um, real advantages. In terms of things to improve, what well, we mentioned earlier, there were some sharp machined edges in places, um, particularly on the filters as there, there often is, but also, as I said, on the hop spider. And that's just worth bearing in mind. Um, the fine mesh filter that was along the bottom, that lifting during the boil was a little bit disconcerting, leading to these pockets of, of, of heated fluid suddenly rising. And finally, John Guest fittings. You might have noticed in the video there was some problems with them leaking. That was all our fault. Um, we completely didn't tighten them up properly, so um, there's no problems there with the actual um, manufacturing process. So overall, it's, as I say, it's been a really um, problem-free brew day. Cleanup as well was really easy, um, fantastic. Just blasted some uh, cold water through the pump just to get, get rid of the stuff inside the pump and uh, generally speaking, wiped down. So overall, pretty good. We highly recommend this. It's the Brewolution Brewster Beacon from brewolution.com. Thank you for watching.